my name is Peyton Hall, and I'm going to read my State of Nature story. Okay. I open my eye to the crack of a door. I see my mom walking in. Good morning, sweetie, she said. Got to get up and get ready for school. I groaned and rolled off my bed. My mom had taken me out of my covers and threw them on my bed. You have to go to school today, so hurry up, my mom said as I sat up. I wish it was Saturday, I said. My mom just shook her head and said, I think everyone does, dear. Yeah, but not everyone has to go to school today. I know you mean adults, and for your information, adults have school too. My mom said in an impatient voice, No, they don't. All they have is work, work, work. I then changed my face from screaming mode to a face like I just made no sense. My mom knew exactly what I was thinking. She then said, See what I mean? And she walked in my room knowing I would get ready. Though she thought wrong. This girl's not going anywhere near the closet nor the bathroom. I was going to stay right here on the floor. At least that's what I tried. After about two minutes of staying, I got out of the floor and headed straight downstairs. It was like my body was controlling me to go have breakfast. I even made a turn to go in the kitchen. Right as I walk in, the first thing I hear isn't, Here is your breakfast, dear. I hear, Why are you still in your PJs? I immediately snapped out of it and said, Why do I have to go to school? My mom then took a deep breath and let it out. She went up to me and calmly said, You need education, and school's ready to go to get that. I knew she was right, though I still wanted to prove my point. I went closer to my mom and then stated, then why can't I be homeschooled? My mom then whispered, Fifth graders, I tell ya. I then yelled, I heard that. She then told me to get ready or I was getting no breakfast. As I walked out the room, I whispered to myself, Tough crowd. As I walked up, I was dwelling on the fact of having to go to school. I ran into the wall and then fell down and fell into a deep sleep. When I woke back up again, I found myself in my room, laying on my bed. My mom must have found me on the floor and thought I was so tired I needed some more sleep. As I finished my sentence, I heard footsteps. It was my mom. As she walked in my room, she asked, Wanna have breakfast here? Wanna have? I said in a confused voice. Well, yes, I wouldn't make you eat breakfast if you didn't want to. Well, I said as if I were in control. I guess so. What is breakfast? My mom just stared at me, if this I was joking. Why, whatever you want, silly. I was so astonished, I just sat there on my bed with my mouth open for about a minute or two. Well, if you insist, then I guess I want waffles. Okay, waffles it is. This is great. I got to choose breakfast, and my mom didn't even bug me about it. Wait a sec, I said to myself. No bugging me about school. I could just choose my own breakfast. Something is wrong. Nah, this day's turned out perfect. Nothing could be wrong. Though right as I grabbed my brush and had the brush in my hair, I couldn't move it. I pulled and pulled, thinking it's just a tangle, nothing bad. Then I saw it. Right in front of me was a super glue bottle and a note. I quickly grabbed the note and skimmed through it. I said, it said, Hello, I think you might be in a bit of a sticky situation. As I read it, I heard a burst of laughter from the other side of the bathroom door. I opened it, and there was Griffin. I thought you were at school, I yelled. What school? I'm sorry, what? I said, what school? I paused for a moment, thinking my brother was insane, and hopefully was just joking. Then I took one good look at him and knew this was serious. Well, school's a place where you go and learn. What kind of things? Lots. Are we done now? Yeah, yeah. I finally felt like I didn't have to talk to Griffin. That's when I remembered, hey, wait a sec, I'm telling Mom! For what? I stared at Griffin in a way that he made no sense. He put glue in my hair. That's when I heard more giggling, though not for my brother. Mom? My mom then said, yeah, so what? Don't you got a sense of humor? This is crazy, I thought. My mom did it. I told my mom that I needed to take a walk. I headed down to my friend Bella's house. Maybe she would know what was going on. As I rang the doorbell, Mari, her little sister, answered the door. Um, hi, Mari. I took one look at Mari. She wasn't the same. It wasn't the same kindergarten wearing tutus, leggings, and a shirt. It was a kindergarten wearing a work suit. How are you doing today, Peyton? How are you doing today? What are you talking about? I thought this wasn't the same Mari I know. The Mari that has to tell me about stuff all the time. The Mari that shows me Bella's stuff all the time. I was so confused. I almost forgot what I was there for. Uh, is Bella home? Who is Bella? Mari answered if she didn't understand. Your sister? Oh, you mean Izzy. Yes, she is. Let me get her. Izzy, come down here. Peyton is here. I was relieved to hear Bella was coming down. Though, why is she called Izzy now? So, Mari, since when did you wear suits? Since when did I not? Yeah, I know, though, why do you wear them? I want to grow up, and this makes me look older. This world just keeps getting crazier and crazier, isn't it? I thought to myself. 
I should have thought sooner though, because right as though, though right as I thought it more happened. Just then I saw Bella riding a skateboard while carrying Gibble in one of her arms and Camera in the other. And the hook onto her skateboard was a little toy princess car with Pixie inside. Um, what you doing? Said hoping it would soon be the real Bella. Oh, nothing. Just doing cat skateboarding. Cat skateboarding? I'll teach you later. This was more than enough craziness. I took one more look at Bella and knew it was the same old lunch stealing Bella, but not that much left. She had dyed her hair blue and was not wearing glasses. How come this world just keeps getting weirder and weirder by the second? <coughs> Bella led me into a room full of cat toys, cat towers, cat tunnels, cat food, cat beds, and the one I mostly regret, the one that makes me wish I had never walked in her room, litter boxes. Welcome to my room, Bella says if she was inviting me into a carnival. Bella, um, what's all this? For starters, it's Izzy, and it's a cat paradise, duh. Okay, now Bella had gone crazy. I knew she loved cats, so walking into what looked like an adoption center for cats was just insane. The weirdest thing was that on top of her bunk bed was not what I was used to seeing. It had three very pretty cat beds lined up in a line across the top bunk. Then every bed had a name on it. The first one said Cam, written in cursive. The next one said Gibble, and this time written in some cutesy smallish kind of way. The last one said Pixie, in a very cutesy little kiddish way. The second word thing in that room was there was just Cameron, Gibble, and Pixie. There was what looked like 20 other cats in there. Bella, who are these cats? Why, my cats, of course. I thought you had one cat and one cat only, Gibble. Then your family had Cameron, and Mari had Pixie. Why, that was a long time ago. Now we have 21 other cats, and Cameron and Pixie, too. I took a moment to think about this. No school. Mom must have whatever I want. Mom pulled a prank on me. Mari wears a suit. Bella has 24 cats now. Here, Bella handed me a piece of paper. What is it? A list of all the cats' names. Take a moment to read it if you want. Bella had walked out of the room, so I felt like I had to look at this list. I started to read it, and some of the names made no sense. The list read, Cameron, Gibble, Pixie, S'mores, Oreo, Spots, Amanda, Sky, Taylor, Tyler, Sammy, Allie, Carly, Tasha, Tabitha, Terabethia, Ninja, Peter, Augie, Savannah, Summer, Adley, Jane, and Carter. Whoa, I thought to myself, how did her parents let her have this many cats? I can't think about everything that happens to me j today, though I still could not put the pieces together. Then Bella walked into the room. Hey, want to go see what Lily's doing? Um, which Lily? The girl? Or is there another cat I don't know about? The girl. And you thought I made no sense. This was great. Lily was so sweet and smart and funny. I was pretty sure she would know what was going on. I stand correct, though, because right as we rang the doorbell, I heard a moo. Ah, what was that? That was Noelle. Haven't you been here before? Yes, the last time I was here, I heard a bark, not a moo. What? Noelle's been here for five years. How have you not seen her or here? Maybe because I don't think that Lola is a cow. Lola? Did I just hear Bella question Lola? Something really is not right here. Yes, Lola, Lily's dog. Come on, you have to know Lola. Sorry, Peyton, don't got a clue. Right as Bella had said clue, Lily opened the door, and standing behind her was a big, fat cow. This did not make sense. When I really come to Lily's house, I get wet kisses from her dog, Lola. This time, I was getting loud moods from a cow. Lily? Yeah? Where's Lola? I beg your pardon? Your dog, you know, the little sweet dog that people think is a boy because she has lots of white fur under her chin and looks like a beard. Okay, one, I'm sorry, I don't know that dog. And two, how do you know so much about this dog? Because she is your dog. I take one look at the cow, and there was a collar on it. It read Noel. And I saw a tag behind it, and I couldn't read it from here. Um, really, may I bring Noel outside? Sure, what for? Um, she probably has to go to the bathroom. Okay, Bella, why don't you come inside? So Peyton brings Noel to the bathroom. Okay, that totally did not just sound like a robot, Bella said sarcastically. When Spell and Lily had gotten in and I was in the front yard with Noelle, I looked closely at her, her collar, and it had a note for me. My dear Peyton, this is for your eyes only. You have been teleported to a world of no rules. The only way to escape is to break the rule. Good luck. What? I screamed so loud, burst flew off the power line. What's wrong? Lily and Bella both shouted as they ran out of the house. Nothing, nothing. I gotta go. Bye, guys. Bye. 
Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I thought. I'm in a world of no rules? This is awesome! I ran home. No home was not like home. There was a dish on the house which made it look like a mansion. Then in the back, there was what I had always dreamed of. There was not just a trampoline like normal. There was a pool, trampoline, full-out park, lounging area, water park like tons of slots, hot tub, greenhouse, and a zoo. I thought I was in heaven, and I also thought I'm never going back. Right as I said that, my dad walked out of the house. Hi, Daddy, I said. Hi, sweetheart. How was your day? Amazing and weird. Well, want to know something amazing? Yeah! We're moving! What? Right as those words came out of my dad's mouth, I knew I had to get back to the real world. I quickly ran out of the backyard as quick as I could. There is no way I'm moving. I went to where the school usually was, and luckily it was there. There was not my school. It was abandoned. There I was in front of my apparently abandoned school. I knew what that note meant by break the rule. I was going to go to school. I pushed the boards in front of the doors to the side and went in. The place was all beat up, and there were skeletons, spiders, and bats. I was able to make it through, though. I went the way I needed to head. I needed to head for my classrooms. When I went inside for something, when I went inside, something was terribly wrong. All my teacher's plants were dead. All the desks were filled with spiders, and the teacher was not there. I quickly looked for my spot and sat down. Right as I sat down, I saw a flash of light, and then I found myself in the hallway. Huh? I was so confused what just happened. I rushed to my room and looked at I rushed to my room and looked at the time. And when I did, the clock said 7.40. I took a deep breath and let it out. I was so relieved. I quickly got dressed and did what I needed to be done in the bathroom. Then I came downstairs. As I walked to my mom, it looked like she was about to yell. Then she turned around and smiled. Here's your breakfast, dear. I'm glad some sense finally got to your head. Me too. Mom, me too. Thank you for watching. Bye.